four Minneapolis police officers, including Derek Chauvin, have been indicted on federal rights charges, civil rights charges, for the arrest and death of George Floyd. They're accused of violating Floyd's constitutional rights while acting in their capacity as police officers. Our Alex Perez has the latest on that and a separate indictment against Chauvin. Alex? Hey, Diane, we knew the feds were investigating the officers' actions for months, but these new federal charges just now being announced. Now, a federal grand jury has indicted all four now former Minneapolis police officers accused in George Floyd's death, accusing them of violating his civil rights. Now, according to count one, Derek Chauvin deprived George Floyd of his right to be free from the use of unreasonable force by a police officer, which resulted in bodily injury to and the death of George Floyd. Now, count two alleges Toe Tao and J. Alexander King both were aware Chauvin was holding his knee across George Floyd's neck as he lay handcuffed and unresisting and willfully failed to intervene. And in count three, all four, according to the indictment, deprived Floyd of his right to be free from a police officer's deliberate indifference to his serious medical needs, adding that he was in clear need of medical care and willfully failed to aid Floyd. Now, Chauvin, who was convicted of killing Floyd in state court last month, also facing a separate federal charge in an unrelated case involving an interaction with a 14-year-old boy in 2017 that required the boy to get stitches. According to court documents, Chauvin allegedly held the juvenile by the throat and struck the juvenile multiple times in the head with a flashlight that resulted in bodily injury. And Chauvin also allegedly held his knee on the neck and the upper back of the teenager even after he was lying prone, handcuffed and unresisting. And Diane, George Floyd's family is reacting to these new federal charges, saying this is continued justice for George Floyd. And they also say that they believe this case will impact black citizens and Americans altogether for generations to come. Diane. All right, Alex Perez, thank you. And I want to bring in Shauna Lloyd, a criminal attorney and managing partner of the Cochran firm, for more on this. Shauna, thanks for being here. How significant do you think these new federal charges are, and what could they mean practically for Derek Chauvin and these other officers? It's incredibly significant to see these type of charges brought, especially on the criminal side. Um, with the federal criminal standard, it is a higher standard. Um, but it is exciting to see that the, the Department of Justice is stepping in to what many feel like was a clear violation of his constitutional rights. Now, the practical implication is that there can be increased sentencing time for these officers. They can choose to have sentences run concurrently or consecutively. They there are charges that do and sentencing guidelines that do go along with these charges that have been brought. And Shauna, do these charges send a message uh, to police forces around the country and others about how the Department of Justice is investigating these kinds of inc incidents? Absolutely. This sends a clear message that the Department of Justice is going to be looking into these incidents. And more specifically, there, the second charge, which is the they did not intervene in a use of unreasonable force, that sends a message to other law enforcement officers that says, if you see something that isn't correct or an unreasonable use of force, you should be intervening. I think that sends a very significant message to the police officers and how they operate within their jobs. Now, this comes after Chauvin's attorney filed a motion for a new trial, alleging, among other things, juror misconduct. Now, a photo on social media shows juror Brandon Mitchell attending an August event to commemorate Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, and he's wearing a shirt that says, Get Your Knee Off Our Necks. Now, George Floyd's brother and sister addressed the crowd at the event that day, but Mitchell told the Star Tribune the event was about the March on Washington, not George Floyd, and that his attendance had no influence on the del deliberations or the verdict. So I, w I wonder, do you think there is any chance that Chauvin gets a new trial here? Typically, this is not unexpected. We expect the defense in this type of a case when all three uh, charges were found guilty to bring these types of appeals. Specifically regarding this juror, 
it's really going to depend on the effects surrounding his attendance. The shirt in and of itself is not enough to uh, grant a mistrial. What we're going to focus on is what the actual overarching message was at the march. If it was, in fact, really a march where the Floyd family happened to have made comments, then that's different. He did not go to an actual protest supporting the Floyd family. So they're going to be looking at the surrounding incidents. They'll look very carefully at his questionnaire to make sure that he did in fact, answer everything correctly. And then the totality of the circumstances, we'll likely see that this was not going to rise to the level of the type of juror misconduct that would allow for a mistrial. And Shauna, on that questionnaire, if he answers that no, he didn't go to any demonstrations uh, pertaining to George Floyd, could that come into question here? It could. They're going to look at what was advertised for this particular march. Um, if it was, in fact, just a march to honor Martin Luther King, and it just happened that the George Floyd family was there speaking, that's not going to rise to the level that he was dishonest, because he did um, admit to being pro-Black Lives Matter. So it would seem that there may be some discrepancy in how he interpreted the question, as opposed to an outright lie. So let's turn back to the officers and these new charges from the Department of Justice. Could they affect uh, the state trial of the other three officers that's set for August? They are going to run separately and independently. State charges and federal charges will happen independently of each other. They will be sentenced independently of each other. Now, obviously, when we talk about trying to choose a juror pool, we may have some influence in the fact that jurors are going to now be aware that there are these federal charges pending. All right, criminal defense attorney Shauna Lloyd. Always great to have you, Shauna. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.